You hear about folks who constantly use emergency rooms when it's not an emergency. Well, this next story has some surprising revelations about who they are, why they go, and how much they're costing you. Here's WFAA's Teresa Woodard with tonight's WFAA Original. The last thing I see is a no-show. A no-show, yeah. Okay. Tough love in action. It's very right. difficult to get those appointments. Okay. It's extremely difficult. So those are not appointments that we can miss. Michael Johnson is 57. I'm from Dallas, you know. He's diabetic, has a job in fast food, and rents a home. He gets by, but until recently. You have my number saved, right. and you have the Parkland number saved, so there is no reason that we have no communication. No one ever explained how hospitals, doctors, and emergency rooms work. My mom always told me something wrong when you go see the doctor. Which is why he went to Parkland's ER 31 times in 24 months. Sound like a lot? Just wait. Parkland Hospital in Dallas has one of the busiest ERs in the country. And one reason is the patients who just keep coming in over and over again. They take up valuable space, which leads to long waits. And because Parkland is a public hospital, they cost Dallas County taxpayers money. The hospital wanted to determine why, but it began with who. Lo and behold, there were three patients in the top of the list between the three of them. They had been to Parkland emergency room 500 times in the 12 month period, 500 times. Dr. Ismael Porsa figured if Parkland experiences this, other ERs do too. So other health systems shared their data with Parkland and there was a revelation. They identified 80 patients who collectively visited four Dallas County ERs 5,139 times in just 12 months. The estimated cost of those visits is more than $14 million. In medical school, we get taught kind of how to take care of sort of their medical illnesses, uh, but there's a group of patients that come in who are here for some other reason. Sometimes these frequent patients really do need medical care. Often they want a warm bed or a hot meal, but Parkland pinpointed a heartbreaking cause for most of these repeat visits. The number one determinant of high idealization is relationships. These patients are lonely. Yes, they are often poor, uneducated, and homeless, but Parkland says loneliness keeps bringing them back. Right, and if you are isolated and lonely, but you have someone that you remember, Nurse April or Nurse Tina or Nurse John, and they're like, hey, Ed, how's it going? And you're greeted with warmth and love, yeah, I'm gonna come back. As far as solutions, there isn't a single one. Teams of administrators, doctors, nurses, and social workers meet weekly to track these patients. Chaplains try to put people in their lives by partnering them with members of faith and community organizations. Parkland, Baylor, Methodist, and Children's are working together on this. Teaching matters too. After Michael Johnson learned community clinics like this one exist from his social worker, his ER visits fell by 70%. But now I know. <laughs> and you're glad you know. And I'm, and I'm glad I know, yeah. Okay. Tough love taught him well. You don't need to be a no-show. That just, it's not good. But he's just one patient. Human connections matter. Widespread change depends on all of us realizing that and living it. In Dallas, I'm Teresa Wooder.